Coast of the Fences as part of the Edexcel 9 to 1 Geography course. Right, so the key words you're going to have to know for this are stakeholders, hard engineering, so the types of hard engineering that you're going to have to learn about, the sea walls, groins and riprap. And you're going to have to know about soft engineering in the form of beach nourishment, managed retreat, courses of many more types of hard engineering and soft engineering as part of coastal management. But as part of the course, it's only these five that you need to learn about. Right, reasons for protecting the coastline. Right, there might be settlements which need to be protected. So that's people's homes that need to be protected. There might be vocational reasons. So, for example, fishing it might be ports or power stations. Uh, the local economy needs protecting. So things like tourism or leisure, they might need to be protected. Uh, wildlife conservation, this is a big one, is uh, in the UK, it's things like marshlands, which are becoming rarer and rarer. So if there's a marshland nearby, uh, the coastline may need to be protected. Scenery, so if it's a really beautiful place, like, for example, the White Cliffs of Dover, that might need to protect, be protected. And then there might be educational value or historical value, like the geology of the place, or the natural history of the place. So stakeholders. Stakeholders are people who have a reason to want to, uh, want to or not want to protect a local area. So of course, there's going to be the local residents. There's going to be developers who might want to convert an area into something else. National park authorities, so for example, English Heritage or um, National Trust, they might not want to protect an area. The local council, environmentalist groups, uh, the government or tourism authorities. So they're all people who might have an interest in protecting a local area or protecting something. So hard engineering. So this is an attempt at controlling natural processes using man-made structures. So the first type of hard engineering is sea walls. OK, so a wall uh, is usually made of concrete and it's built to prevent erosion through reflecting the surface, the energy of the uh, wave back to sea. So there's the advantages of this is that it's good at protecting the area and it prevents flooding and it prevents erosion. But then there's obviously disadvantages as well, which are that it's very expensive. It can remove sediment from the beach. It can ruin the landscape and it has high maintenance cost as well as uh, because the wall erodes, of course. Obviously, it's going to take a long time, but it's going to have to, um, once that wall's eroded, you're going to have to repair it, and that's going to be very expensive. There's groins. So groins are barriers built out to sea, which are usually wooden or stone, and they stop longshore drift uh, of sediment in order to grow the beach. So the advantages of this is that it pre uh, pre prevents longshore drift and it protects the beach. It catches sediment and builds up the beach. Uh, it's an attraction to tourists as they have their, it's basically like a their own little private beach of you between the groins and it's a natural defence because uh, it it protects the, uh, the sediment so it brings in the sediment so that's what's going to be taken away rather than the coastline being eroded. The disadvantages is that, that it can starve other places of sediment. So say if you're preventing longshore drift to the north of somewhere to the south, that um, that place isn't going to get any sediment because that's kept because of the groins. So that place is going to be more susceptible to erosion. It's also going to be expensive to build and maintain as wood or rocks. They're going to be eroded quite easily or weathered or uh, just broken. And they can also be very unattractive. They can be quite obtrusive to the local environment. So riprap, also known as rock armour, are large boulders, usually granite uh, from Norway, which are placed on the beach in order to absorb the uh, energy from the waves because they can move a little bit. So as they move, they uh, absorb the energy. So advantages are that they absorb the uh, wave energy and they prevent cliff erosion. And this allows the build up of the beach. It allows uh, the waves to deposit sediment and it, uh, allows the beach to build up. The disadvantages is that it's expensive it can ruin the landscape and transportation is, is difficult, especially if it's coming from Norway. And it can contribute to global warming with those fumes that are coming from however it's transported from wherever it's coming from. 
So soft engineering. Yeah, so this is the attempt at controlling natural processes using natural structures. OK, so beach nourishment, as you can see here, it's the supplement to the beach by artificially adding large amounts of sediment to the beach. So here you can see they're putting more shingle, sand, pebbles or whatever it is back onto the beach. So the advantages of this are that it looks natural. It's not exp as expensive as some of the hard engineering options. It improves beach quality so it can attract tourists along to the beach and it prevents cliff erosion. The disadvantages to this are that it requires constant maintenance. So it's not sort of a one, uh, a one choice thing. So it's not like a uh, rock wall, which you only have to put there once and you only have to maintain it. This requires constant maintain, uh, maintenance. So it's gonna have to be done every couple of months. And it doesn't last long. So as I said, because it has to be uh, maintained, it will only last a couple of months. Uh, and then the sediment will have been transported away by longshore drift and managed to treat this is uh the last one and it's basically allowing erosion and weathering to happen naturally without intervention so this is basically not doing anything it can include the realignment of coastline and allow the flooding uh, uh of areas of land so there's a very good example of this which is medmary near west sussex so the advantages of this are that it creates more habitats and that it prevents further uh, flooding and prevents erosion. So you can really choose where you want the flooding to happen. You can choose where you want erosion to occur. And you've got to choose um, where and how much the land value is going to be. So you're going to choose an area which is mainly going to be farmland where you can pay people to take their business elsewhere. It's going to be a, uh, somewhere that the land's not got high value. It's going to be quite a cheap option. Disadvantages are that the land's obviously going to be lost people may lose their livelihoods so it is somewhere this farm uh, that you're going to be flooding you're gonna um they're gonna lose their livelihood they're gonna lose their land they're gonna lose their home 